Praise God. Matthew chapter 1, beginning at verse 23. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall she bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Do you want him with you? Well, that's kind of a load of, we're at church, of course you want him, but when you leave here, wherever it is you're going, whatever it is you're going to go look at, whatever your mind's going to, Jesus, we thank you for your word tonight. Well, we are thankful for the Christmas season, Lord, and we're thankful that it's a, it's a wonderful time of year and we don't want to waste it on anything other than to give you glory. Allow me, Lord, to bring forth this word, Lord to your precious saints of God tonight, those online, God, and those in the house. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. amen. I want to talk about presence, but not presence. Yes. Come on. Come on. There's a spelling difference. Yep. A few years ago on a Sunday morning, the newspaper had a comic strip depicting a father and a son on a snowy day looking in front of the window of a department store. The display in that window was of a, a Christmas tree, and it was surrounded by all the toys and trappings of a commercial Christmas season. A sign posted on the inside of the window that rightly said, come in and shop. Let's make this the best Christmas ever. The caption on the cartoon was of the father looking at his son and saying, well, how are they going to top the first one? Oh, Lord, I'd lost everybody. I got two in here that got it. <laughs> it was meant to combine some humor and satire. It was successful, of course, but the satire side was, uh, it shows, it serves to express how commercial we've made Christmas, how society thinks Christmas should be. For you to think it's successful, there's some people that's got to be about Christmas trees and lights and a whole bunch of presents and rip and tear with no despair at dark 30 on a Christmas morning where mom and dad hadn't gotten much sleep. And how the difference is between how this Christmas will be celebrated next to that first night in Bethlehem when our Savior was born. God walked with Adam in the garden. He walked with Enoch. He spoke with Noah, Abraham, Jacob, Moses, Joshua, and many others. And if you're new and have not spent very much time reading the Bible, I invite you to start looking through the Bible, especially the Old Testament, the historical books, books of the prophets like Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Daniel, and Ezekiel, and pay attention to how many times, how many times God's presence with his people is specifically mentioned or implied by content and context of Scripture. Can you imagine the presence of the Lord as Paul and Silas worshipped in a prison? I, I, I don't... No, I cannot fathom. I'd like to be able to get a glimpse of what it was like for the three Hebrews to look up and see the fourth man in the fire during the fiery furnace or even what Daniel must have felt in that lion's den. I said all that because I want you to know the same God that did all those things is still desires an intimate relationship with humanity. He wants a closeness with you and I right now. Amen. Mm -hmm. I, hope, I hope the simplicity of that statement didn't escape you. Where you're at right now, no matter what you're in, what you face, how if you're on a mountaintop or in a valley, nothing is greater than to be in the presence of God. Hebrews tells us in, in 13 and 8 that Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, and we can quickly read that, but you have to realize how awesome that is. 
It says in John 8, 58, and he said to them, very, very, I send you before Abraham was, I am. I, you have to understand, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure who, who Adam walked with was pretty much the same, who spoke with Saul on the road to Damascus and, and who was in the fiery furnace and, and the same presence was in the lion's den. Stop and I'm telling you, First Timothy reminds us in chapter 3, verse 16, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. That God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, uh, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up in glory. The same God that walked with all those in the Old Testament is here right now inviting you into his presence. And Colossians 2 and 9 declares, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him. You are complete. You are complete in him. And his presence beats any present. Amen. Amen. Which is the head of all principality and power. God's presence is still the greatest gift. We must place value, value on the Spirit of God in our lives. Second Corinthians chapter 6 and says, What agreement hath the temple of God with idols? You see, we, we, we don't bow down to idols, but we serve them. We build a lot of things and have a lot of things in, in our lives that uh, because we're not bowing down. Well, hold on a second. Did you bow down in here tonight? But you're serving God. You see, let's be honest, because if you're doing the same thing for something else as you are for God, you sit here for an hour and a half, man, I know people will sit in front of Netflix for hours. Is that serving? And you know, I'm not, I'm not nitpicking here. I want us to be real. It's about his presence, not presence, not stuff. For you are the temple of the living God, a God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and will be their God, and they shall be my, it's still about his presence, folks, and it's just not externally, but it's internal. If you want a whole, a spirit-filled church, then you need to be a spirit-filled person. I want to go to a spirit-filled church. Well, we want you to come here and be a spirit-filled saint of God. When's the last time you spoke in tongues and got Holy Ghost filled the way the Bible said? Quit talking scripture and ideology. Get the presence in you. Wherefore, come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith. What is more intimate than a father with his children? In our Christmas celebrations, and young people, please don't get me wrong. I, I want your parents to give you something as a representation. Now, now I'll put a caveat on, hey, parents, just be biblical about this. If Jesus just got three gifts, Hello? Hello? <laughs> you're too loud, brother. They're sitting right there. <laughs> of course, they did get gold, frankincense, and myrrh, but I digress. <laughs> How many still with me right now? <laughs> Got jokes tonight, if you're paying attention. <laughs> Nothing is greater than his presence. We like to give gifts. However, in trying to find the perfect gift for our loved ones, gift giving sometimes sidetracks us from what Christmas is all about. It's not about presence, but it is about his presence. His presence in our lives. If we allow God's presence into our lives this Christmas, there'll be even more benefits than just giving each other gifts because it's Christmas. God's presence can change us. God's presence can change us. Christ, Christmas, you, 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 ha you can't say them apart. <laughs> it's about our Savior, our Redeemer. 
and, and, and the gift that is offered to us and given freely, and that's the gift of his presence. When we experience God's presence in our life, it's life-changing. I can testify that it's life-changing. I can tell you that it, it changed me. I, I wish that I'd yielded so much to it that it would have made me perfect, but sadly, it the war is still there that Paul speaks about in Romans 7. I'm, I'm, I'm trying, folks. I'm trying to do it. Nobody ever walks away from an encounter with God the same way that they entered. Moses told the Lord in Exodus 33, Now therefore I pray thee if I have found grace. In thy... Let me tell you something. People think New Testament is a grace. Great grace isn't salvation. They had grace in the Old Testament. Amen. They weren't saved in the Old Testament because of grace anymore. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't confuse what the writer's saying when by grace you are saved. Through, through faith, it is the gift of God. Come on, come on. Come we got to be, be here to read their Bible? Amen. If I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way that I may know thee that I might find grace in thy sight and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, if thy presence go not with me, carry us not up thence, for wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not that thou goest with us? Are you hearing what he's saying? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth? He's saying, if thy presence go not with me, carry us not. I don't want to go where you're not going, Jesus. God, I don't want to be separated from you. I would hope that as we mature as saints of God, there would be something about us. Jesus, I don't want to be doing something you're not doing. I don't want to be going someplace you're not going. If, if the church doors are open, I know you're going to be there. Why am I sitting at home? I got a little ache. I got a little pain. I got, I got, to, or maybe some other thing takes my, oh, Jesus, I don't want to miss your presence. I would hope that we would mature with the same sentiments in our walk with God. How many problems and pains would we have avoided if we'd have held ourselves to a high standard of, I want to be where the presence of the Lord is. David prayed that he would not be cast away from God's presence. He said in Psalms 51, cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. God's presence was important to these two men. It was worth more than anything else. And I hope that we today can feel the same way. I hope there's something about you. You know, I got a lot going on and there can be excitement built, but nothing replaces me woman, coming into the house of the Lord. And getting in the presence of God, Amen. getting around that, that and allowing that the greatest gift is the gift of the Holy Ghost. And Lord, I'm going to exercise that gift in here today. Many times if you hear parents talk about gift giving and it's, it's kind of a joke. They played more with the box than they did the toy. We, we crack up at that and laugh, but how, how, it, that lets us know that those presents don't compare with his presence. Acts 1 and 8 says, but you shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost is come upon you, and, she, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and in Samaria. And the other. That's how power the gift of his presence is. Yes, amen. It should go with you everywhere. It should be the, the greatest presence on the planet. It's a gift because Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Oh, thank God for his presence. But you see, God's omniscient, omnipotent. He, he's everywhere at all times. He's all-powerful. But the whole point of Calvary and the whole point of Easter and the whole point of the day of Pentecost was so that instead of God around you, you get God in you. You get his presence in you. How do you know? For they heard them speak with tongues. I, let me just let you off the hook here. You're not going to be confused whether you got the Holy Ghost or not. Because the Bible says when you receive the Holy Ghost, uh, it'll be evidence with the speaking another tongue as the Spirit gives you. You can't fake that. 
Thank God for his presence. Once we receive that gift, we shouldn't want to go anywhere without it. And so that brings me to Ephesians. And Ephesians is such a, a, a beautiful book. The, the church of Ephesus was a great church. In fact, if you had to pick to be any one of the churches, it would be Ephesus because in the book of Revelation, it's, it's just, man, they, man, they did a lot right. They're, they had one thing against them, but man, I'm telling you, Ephesus was a good church, so you need to listen to this. And it says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. All these people that once saved, always saved junk. That, that's a lie. That devil wants you to think that. Paul said, I'm glad I speak with tongues more than y'all. Let me tell you, so you come in the house of God, you better allow his presence to move through you. You better stir up that gift that's in you. If you haven't done that in a while, you may get caught up in the presence of the world and not the presence of God. Whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bit listen to what the Holy Ghost will do. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you. With all malice and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. We need to value the gift of the Holy Ghost. The, we need to value his presence. Hebrews tells us, it says in verse 4 through 6 in chapter 6, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. See, it's spiritual, folks. If they shall fall away to renew them again under repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put them to open shame. Can I say it this way? Oh, I need his presence because Jesus, I don't want to do anything that'll shame you. I, I don't want to do anything. Jesus, where you're going today, that's where I want to go. What, what you're doing today, that's what I want to do. I don't want to grieve the Holy Ghost because God's presence is always good. Are you hearing me? Scripture tells us in James 1, 17 that every good and perfect gift is from above. Oh, and cometh down from the Father lights in whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Matthew 7 and 11 kind of reiterates this. There's no one like God and no one who can give like him. It says in Matthew 7, 11, if ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children. Everybody say Christmas. How much more shall your father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? If you want the Holy Ghost, ask him. If you want the gift of the Holy Ghost, ask him. If, if, if you don't want just presence, but you want his presence in you, you just got to ask him. There isn't a gift on the planet that can compare to what the Lord can give you and wants to give his children. God is ready and willing to pour out of his spirit upon all flesh. Yeah. Psalm 16, 11 notes that in God's presence is the fullness of joy. This joy cannot be found in anything else. There will always be a time of gladness and refreshing in his presence. Psalms, it says, that will, that will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy, and at thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. Acts 13 and 19, repent ye therefore, and be converted. Listen, get some mind changing. Get some mind changing. Hey, some of you young people, listen to me. Guess what? I know you think getting the nicest car on the planet is going to set. No, it won't. I haven't owned near the amount of cars as that gentleman right over there has. He's got cars sitting in his garage right now. Don't get me wrong when I say this. He's also showed up every day for work and worked his tail off his entire life. What, you only been retired two years? Three maybe? Worked. He's got car value because he busted his tail. Yeah. Bought him cheap, sell him high. 
Be a good steward of your money. So when I say this, don't get me wrong. I want that. Wanting it and going and earning it, two different things. So I say that to say this. You can want that. It ain't going to satisfy if you got a garage full of them. Hey, ladies, we love y'all. But you ain't the answer to a perfect life. Any more than we are an answer to a perfect life. And I get an amen from all them ladies. Oh, come on. Now you still got to wash his socks and put up with his snoring backside and all. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. So our presence isn't the answer, but his is. There ain't nothing in this world worth losing your soul over. Christmas is about his presence, not presence. <laughs> So when it comes to giving, Jesus' gift is always right. It's always perfect, and it's always the best. And we need to realize that his gift is good, and that's what I, that's what I want my life to be about. In fact, I found that the more I'm about his presence, the better I am in your presence. And the more you're about his presence, the better you are in my Oh, can I get an amen? Uh, we're all better. We're all better when we're full of the Holy Ghost. Uh, life is better when we're full of the Holy Ghost. Everything's better when it's about his presence. Even singing's better when it's about his presence. Life, my home is better when it's full of his presence. My job is, you don't know like I know. It really is about his presence. Now, I understand God's presence to get it to stick around demands holiness. I know some of y'all struggle with that, but I'm going to tell you something. You need to, the more the world needs, you need to look less ladies and men. We yes. need to look less and less. If Don't put all their junk on you. If God didn't put it there, get it off. Cover yourself up. He's a holy God. There ought to be something modest about you, about us men and our word and our deed and how we act. He demands separation. Holiness is attractive to God. Worldliness is attractive to the worldly. Now, I understand there's some things we've grown attached to. Mm, but what he gives in replace of what we give up is far greater because I'd rather have his presence than any present from the world. I know we struggle with that. I know there's some people, you have a hard time with that. You, I don't want to let go of this and I don't want to let go of that. But I'll tell you what, you drop that foul language and watch what happens to your brakes. You learn to turn the other cheek. You learn to dress modestly and, and, and so, be sober and right. You start, you start walking right and talking. You watch the presence of God, desire to be around you. The Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. Isaiah 61 and 3 is an interesting scripture. It says, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give them unto them beauty for ashes. Good trade. See, my, my American Indian ancestry, good, good trade. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, good trade. That they might be called trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. I See, I'm, see, I'm not doing this for, and see, when you struggle doing stuff for God, it's because life's still about you. Come on. But when it's about glorifying God, ain't nothing you won't do. Well, I need to be in the church a little bit longer. I'll be there. It gives him glory. I tell you right now, I can tell you right now where people are by their willingness to do. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh, man, that's too much. You're asking too much. I don't know. I like to be in his presence. I don't know about you. If we trust what scripture says and we look back to what God has done in our life, we will all know that what God does is good. 
there were times, and I can tell you right now, there were times in the juvenility of my Christianity, I made some stupid mistakes, all based on selfishness. Yes. All based on my obstinate attitude that I knew better than God. How dare you let this happen in my life? All right, God, whatever. And it was by his mercy and his grace, he turned around. All right. Are you finished now? Are you finished? Are you done doing it your way? Are you sick and tired? Are you done yet? Okay, I'm here. When you're done, there's an old song when you sing Pentecost. He was there all the time, waiting patiently in line. You really want to put a deity in line? I'll never forget, I was reading a Reader's Digest about a really famous country singer. In fact, I, I, I knew her uh, niece. Famous. If I said her name, you'd know it right now. And she said, God knows I'm busy, so he'll meet me on my time. Now, we would never want to say that out of our mouth, but how many of us live that with our lives? Well, let me say this. God's presence always fits. If you're in a place that doesn't fit, then you're in a place you shouldn't be. See, there are two types of people, those who reach out and accept God's presence and simply those who don't. Jesus' gift will always fit every person and for every situation. Acts 17 is beautiful. It says, and they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him and find him. Can I tell you right now, though he be not far from any one of us? Did you hear that? He's not far from you. No, he's, he's, he's not far. It, it, no, it's, it's just a simple repentance and turn. Yeah. For in him we live and move and have our being as certain also of our poem poets have said, for we are also his offspring. I'm telling you, he's not far. Why don't you feel after him? Let me, let me take evangelistic license. How many of you get your feelings hurt? You don't feel good. You don't feel right. It's all about you all the time. Well, you're going to find one day it's really been about him, and you might want to feel after him. Yes. I don't feel good. My knee hurts. My back hurts. I got a headache. I, I worked an extra hour. I don't feel like it. It's in him that we find our every need. Philippians 4.19, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Luke 2 and 30 says, well, let me just let me read this. Behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. Listen to this, folks. The same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. This is a Christmas story. It's not talked about. I'm going to be closing it with this. And he came by the Spirit in the temple, and when the parents brought in the child, the Spirit led him. He realized the promise that he had was still contingent on him being led of the Spirit. Yes. Let me help you. How many have a spirit here? Yes. But you got to yield to his spirit. See, I've been around some of you. I've had people corner me in a bad spirit questioning, you know, it's just, the, it's just the job of a pastor. Come on, married folks. You've got to deal with the spirit of your partner. <laughs> hey, parents, you know they had a bad day at school. They come home, you're like, oh, my, let's go to your room. That old saying, children should be seen and not heard, a lot of truth to that. Sit down and shut up. You ain't smart enough to be talking. Okay? You don't understand the situation. There's that Lord, oh, I hate to get into this. Now you have to understand my, my, my stepson is a police officer. But let me tell you, there's a lawyer making a lot of living. You know what he's saying is? Stop self-snitching. Stop self-snitching. I can help some of y'all. Pre- when you ain't got nothing good to say, Thunder's mom had it right. Don't say nothing at all. Shut up. You get pulled over and even you're right. Don't tell a cop. He's not there for what's right. He's here to give you a ticket. You talk long enough, you're going to talk yourself and you'll say just enough that you'll create something that wasn't there. Shut up. 
So what do I mean spiritually? When you're going through it and you know you're not where you should be with God, some of your greatest worship is silence. Don't think, I, don't, really? Why do you think he had Israel march around Jericho so long with the mouth shut? He got sick and tired of hearing their complaining. I'm about to give you a victory, and you know what? I'm going to give it to you, but I just, I just want to hear the sound of your silence. Come on, parents. Brother Jonathan, you got some beautiful girls, but they're so tired. Can I just get some quiet up in here? Hey, kids, be respectful of your parents. Hopefully God will bless you one day. You'll be one, and you're going to want them to respect you. But the Bible's very clear on reaping what you sow. If you can't yes, shut up now, trust me, you're going to have the worst kids on the planet. going to drive you, pull your hair out. You hear what I'm saying? And trust me, trust me, your mom and dad go, oh, yeah, they just like you. And you know they're going to say it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I told y'all have fun. We're heading back to our house. <laughs> Isn't that how it is? So there is a time for us to understand, hey, God, oh, now listen, Simeon had this promise. He was led of the spirit to church. Very seldom will God lead you to stay home from church. That's your spirit, all right? And when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart. I'm ready to go in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen salvation. He's looking at Jesus, baby Jesus. He's looking at Christmas. He's in the presence of Christmas. He's in the presence of the Christ child. I've seen salvation. Ha <laughs> ha! which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Simon realized that Jesus was the answer to every situation. Let's stand. His eyes saw absolute salvation. He saw the ultimate solution to every problem. God's solution was a relationship with Jesus that would bring to all humanity the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is God's gift yes. and salvation for all people. Yes. So God's presence this Christmas, this Christmas, we need more of his presence. Not at just our events, Come on. Come on. but in our lives. How many know you need more of the presence of God in you? Amen. Our text today explains that Jesus was named Emmanuel, being translated, God with us. God didn't just desire to be with us, but he desires to dwell in us through the infilling of the Holy Ghost. That's what it's about. If we follow the direction given in Acts 2 and 38, we can receive the gift of his presence within us, the Holy Ghost. That's the real reason to celebrate him and not just Christmas. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Elizabeth Kubler-Ross was a researcher who distinguished herself with her pioneering work on death and dying. Oh, where am I going with this? She once made the similarity of between people and stained glass windows. People are like stained glass windows. When the sun is out, some people are shiny and beautiful. But when the sun goes down, they are dark and useless. Are you hearing me? But if a stained glass window has light on the inside, it doesn't matter what happens on the outside because the light comes from within and it shines out. If you're a stained glass window, 
What do you look like when the sun goes down? What do you look like when the sun goes down? In truth, God has always been with us because he's omnipresent, which means he's ever at all times. David wrote, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 23, I am, I, am I only a God nearby, declares the Lord, and not a God far away? Who can hide in secret places so I cannot see them, declares the Lord. Do not I feel heaven and earth, declares the Lord. God is present everywhere at all times throughout the universe. But he desires to be present within. This is what makes him different from all the false gods and idols in the world. Through a select group of people, through the Jews, he revealed himself as I am, a present, personable, noble God. But to everybody, he desires to be a presence within you. It's not about presence today. It's about his presence within you. It's not about presence under a tree, but about his presence in your life. I wonder if there's anybody here hungry for his presence. Do you hunger and thirst for his presence? If, have you lived long enough to know that the things of this world and this life is fleeting, but God, give me your presence.